What's up everybody, Drew Kimball here from Brain Trust Creative. We work in live events, and if you know anything about 2020, those don't exist anymore. Everything has moved virtual, so we're gonna give you three ways to deal with video calls. So let's start high-end and go low-end. Your first option is a pro rack-based system. Now this is Skype only. If you're working with Zoom or FaceTime or some of those other techs, just know that this is specifically designed for Skype for broadcast, okay? A couple different companies make these. Uh, the one I'm showing you here is this one from New Tech. Okay, it's called the Talk Show. And you'll find that it varies in price for how many Skype channels you wanna deal with. If you're talking to one person, you need one channel or up to four. You're gonna pay about $1,500 to $2,000 per Skype channel, which is not cheap. You can buy an entire iMac for that and then just run Skype through that, okay? So I'm not saying it's cheap, but it is targeted and built for, you know, for that purpose. Every Skype channel gets audio routing, HD, SDI inputs and outputs, scaling, tally lights returning to the person on Skype so they know when they're on screen. So a lot of pro level features if you're dealing with some broadcasters or people who, who are used to being in a live production environment, this is the dedicated box to do it. Now, $8,000, it's nothing to sneeze at. We can have some other ways to deal with this. Next up is NDI. Now NDI, if you don't know what it is, it's a video over IP system that allows you to route video on a local network. It does this at minimal compression, so your feeds look great, supports things like key fill, and a lot of products out there are now supporting it, including Skype. Now, again, a Skype specific example, okay? If I go into the preferences of Skype, okay, and I come down to calling, and then I look under advanced, you'll see in the most recent versions of Skype, there's a new tab, uh, a little button that says allow NDI usage. Now what this does, if I, if I enable this, which it's enabled right now, what this does is this begins to publish all the feeds from Skype out as NDI IP video streams, okay? Now, they also watermark it, which is why you'll see a little, where do you want the watermark, bottom left corner, top right corner, all that kind of stuff. So I'll give you an example. If I just uh, if I just start a call here, and I'm going to use my IMAX built-in screen here, so I'll start the call. I'll be the only one in it. So here I am, the only person in the call. Okay, you'll see up at the top a new thing that says I'm running NDI. This actually will warn everyone on your call that you're using a technology that might record them. A little bug at the top. It's pretty unobtrusive, but it will it will warn them that you are doing that. So now I know that I'm outputting an NDI feed. If I were to open up new, uh, an NDI monitor, which is, this is a free application from New Tech to monitor NDI streams, and I come up, you'll see that my local computer here is producing a, an NDI feed. If I fire that up, there's my NDI feed. Now, don't get confused. Skype presents you with a mirrored view. NDI is what's actually coming out. So you'll see there's my bug in the bottom left corner, and you'll see that it's a full video feed, okay? Um, it's coming out at about 125 to 140 megabits per second. Works great over gigabit. There's tons of boxes out there that will take in NDI, use them at will, okay? Uh, if you're used to using a Pro Presenter, that will take an NDI. Pro Video Player will take an NDI. Reslim will take an NDI. New Tech Switchers will take an NDI. There are hardware boxes to convert NDI. So NDI is a great option. Now what's amazing is that Skype actually isolates each caller in that NDI feed. You'll actually see right now under this menu, you'll see Skype local. That's me, local Skype, okay? If I were to, uh, I'll close this for a second. If I were to add someone to the call, I'll add my, I'll add myself. My other computer's gonna ring, I'm gonna go answer it. So now what I've done is I've added another computer to this Skype call, okay? So you can see in the setup, I've got my other computer here and here's my view and whatever. Now, if I look at NDI monitor, you'll see that Skype is actually putting out multiple feeds, okay? One, again, local, that's me, that's my camera, okay? Another one is the active caller. That's the one that's switched to whoever is active on the call. So if you have four or five people on the call and somebody talks, they're the one that takes the active view, that's what this NDI feed is. 
Um, then you'll see each caller is actually identified by their Skype name. So if they have a Skype account and they have a name, you'll actually see their name there. We're using just kind of a guest thing on this machine, which is why it's that random string of digits. You'll get a new uh, stream for everyone who's active. So this is that computer. That would be your remote presenter coming out as a, an NDI feed that you could take into any other system across your network. Okay. The one downside here is that um, these NDI feeds, while they're separate video, they share a group audio mix. So if you have four or five people on your Skype call, all the audio comes down all the channels. It's something we've requested of Skype to change to isolate each person's audio, but right now it's not a feature. So you've got to either tell people to mute themselves when they're not speaking, which they could forget to do and screw up your presentation, or uh, you'll do what we've started to do, which is actually have multiple machines on Skype calls. So three machines set up, three NDI feeds coming out, we're gonna mix something externally and send it back to them. We'll get into uh, to sins here in a minute. NDI is a great option if you have a system that can take advantage of it. Now, our third and final way to deal with this, plain old monitor out. Most computers will support external monitors. If there's a way you can get your Skype or Zoom call nicely on that external monitor, then there's a way we can convert that and deal with that in a production setting. Okay, so I've got my uh, iMac here. I've got two monitors hooked up. The first thing you should know, especially on Mac, is you need to have this as displays have separate spaces. That's under System Preferences, Mission Control, and this checkbox right here. That needs to be checked. You'll know it's working if you have a menu bar at the top of every screen you have. Okay, the reason we need to do this is if they have a shared space and we take this full screen, we can't get our mouse off of it, which means the controls always stay up and we don't want that to show up downstream in our production. So displays have separate spaces, make sure you enable that. So now we've got our Skype call. And so what we need to do is make this full screen as possible with as little junk over it as possible. If you're looking right now, you've got the name of the meeting and the links and the mutes and the buttons and emojis and then these people, if you had more people on the call, they'd all stack up in a row right here. So all of that's gonna clutter it up and leave you with less and less space, which is gonna confuse the person on the Skype call because you're gonna need to frame them up differently. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna click this little menu and we're gonna toggle this to window mode. Instead of floating all the controls above the video, window mode is going to move some up into a bar. So if we hit window mode, you can see all that stuff ended up up in a bar and it moved our video down slightly. It's cropping a little. So now we have this nice clean edge to work with. Okay. So now if we come here and we say enter full screen, this takes over, okay? And so if I move my mouse, you can see there's all this buttons and stuff, but there's this nice clean bar. So if I take this full screen, now you can see there's a nice clean edge along the top, but I still have all this stuff along the bottom. Well, if we have display set as separate spaces, we can move our mouse out of the monitor entirely. And now we've got this nice, clean, perfect Skype feed. Okay, now it is cropped just a little bit. So you're gonna have to tell your person to tilt their camera down give themselves too much headroom so that that bar doesn't encroach on the shot. Then you've got the ability to have this great shot. Now, how do we output that? Well, if you're around a production, you input PowerPoint computers or ProPresenter computers into outputs all the time. A lot of ways we do it is by taking an HDMI output of the computer and simply firing it through one of these decimators or any other SDI conversion. I get my outputs, they go into my switcher, I'm good to go. Now. If I wanna crop out the top of that thing, I might wanna consider moving to a scaler. So this Terranex AV will take HDMI input from a Mac or a PC, spit out SDI, but I've got sizing controls and I just bump it up, move it out, scale it until that gray bar is done. You're not losing that much pixels. And since it's a Skype call anyway, blowing it up doesn't you know, degrade the end product terribly. Okay, so consider a scaler. This is not the only one out there. You could check out an Image Pro or other options. That way you could crop the image on the way to your system. The other option is if you're hitting a switcher, use one of the switcher's DVEs to resize that a little bigger. And if you're doing something fancy like a two up pip, maybe you can use that as an opportunity to crop in around this screen. 
easy way to do this. This is an isolated feed of that person. This is an isolated audio of that person. Very nice to work with in a system. So why would we prefer a monitor output as opposed to the dedicated box and as opposed to NDI? Well, those two solutions are Skype only right now. If you use Zoom, you do not get NDI output and there's no dedicated rack box for it. So until those other chat services add those technologies, the most universal way to do this is a monitor output. Okay, and fortunately with the ability to crop and scale, they can all be adjusted and we can deal with them. So the real question is, which one fits you and your workflow? If you're working with Skype all the time and you're using NDI uh, already, then Skype and NDI is a brilliant solution. Uh, if you're uh, just going for it with Skype and you want it professionally permanently integrated, then check out uh, a dedicated hardware box. But if you're like me and you need to be flexible with different clients using different services, we're using monitor outs right now because they're the most flexible. Okay, one final topic. How do we get something back to our Skype caller? If this is set up like I just did, they're gonna see my FaceTime camera, which is me, the video producer, in video world or front of house somewhere, and not the person they're talking to on stage. So we need to get them back the thing they need to see to confidently be a part of the production. There's a couple of options for that, okay? One great option is a video interface. If you've ever used a Ultra Studio or Decklink card or any of those capture devices uh, made by Blackmagic or others, those are great ways to get a custom video return into Skype or Zoom. You'll see here, the uh, Skype sees the sources and right there are the four ports on the black magic card I have hooked up in a Thunderbolt 3 box to this uh, iMac Pro. So I could send them a custom feed of what I wanted them to see, okay? From an audio standpoint, an audio device works just as well. I've got USB audio interface, I could take in XLRs, I could read the embedded audio off an SDI line from the black magic. All of that is a possibility. Some of that stuff can get pricey though. Some of those things are at a minimum $400, $500 for a single input. So the other thing I recommend is this guy. It's actually made for game streamers. It's made by Elgato. It's called the HD60S Plus. Now the plus is key here. The regular S doesn't do this. The regular S only works with Elgato's plugin and OBS. The plus makes this thing show up like a webcam. So anything that can use that, it's called UVC, Universal Video something rather. Any app can use this. So if I plug this in, you'll see on one end, it's got a USB-C to go to my uh, Mac or PC, HDMI input, and then it's got an analog audio input that's stereo. So I could send them a mix minus of the show. And even uh, we like to have a talk back microphone that we can say, hey, are you ready? You're about to go live, 30 seconds till you're live, whatever. They'll be able to see the feed coming in. And this little guy is only a couple hundred dollars. Now, they're hard to find right now because everyone and their mom is game streaming. So you have to look around for it. We had to grab this off eBay and paid way too much for it. But these type of boxes are fantastic at capturing video and sending it back to a Skype feed. It shows up right here in the interface. It'll say HD 60 plus, you choose it. And then whatever's hitting this will hit back to your Skype caller. So we like to build a custom video feed to go back as well as a mix minus audio of whatever we want them to hear, plus the ability for the producer to talk to them so they can warn them when they're about to go live, adjust their camera angle remotely, all that kind of stuff. So you'll wanna make sure you send back a good feed to them so that they feel comfortable being a part of the show. So that's it for us. Thanks for joining us on how to work with uh, Skype and video calls in a live production. Let us know if you've got any questions. We're gonna have some more videos coming out soon of how to deal more with this arena of remote production. Uh, would love to hear your feedback and we'll catch you soon.